Hello beautiful souls and welcome to today's reading. We are going to be doing a really quick reading today. It's going to be a brief reading. That's what I'm, that's my intention I'm setting. That's the energy I was tapped into and that's what we're going to be looking at. So hopefully, fingers crossed, this will be a shorter reading than some of the others we've been doing lately. So what I was guided to do today was a soul purpose reading, connecting into soul purpose energy and just really feeling into that exploration. So whether you are doing your soul purpose right now or not, whether you are wanting to discover what your soul purpose is, whatever it might be, I've just been guided to a very, very specific type of reading for this. So we're going to get a few of these cards, we're going to get a few of another deck, and then we're going to get some pairing messages. But this is all around soul purpose, business, anything like that. So if that doesn't resonate, if that's not what you're focusing on right now or your vibe right now, then this, this may not be the reading for you. But I'm also being told to keep it short and sweet. So let's go into this. What do we need to see for our soul purpose work right now? What is the biggest messages we need? So we have Sisterhood of the Rose. This says beauty and devotion, priestess, mystic, teacher. Love this. Love this card. Love the energy of this. We have the Sisterhood of the Rose. So we work a lot with the priestess energy. Obviously, the mystic energy teacher. We work a lot with those sort of energies in different sort of programs and product like you know spaces we hold um we're currently doing a program called sacred soul purpose which is just a fortnightly drop in you can come and go as you please kind of ceremony where we work on business and in that we speak a lot of really focusing on the the passion where that's illuminating within us, right? Really focusing on what we're devoting ourselves to. Are we devoting ourselves to the right path? Are we devoting ourselves to the right energy? And what I'm really feeling with this is this essence of devotion. When we feel into the essence of devotion, we I really focus on the goddess Pavati. So I'm feeling a goddess coming through here with that as well. The goddess Pavati really does teach us about devotion. But when we feel into the priestess, the mystic, the teacher, this energy of devotion, we also focus a lot on the goddess Isis. So the priestess energy is our ability to be a conduit. The energy is our ability to be a, a, a channel the teacher energy is our ability to translate that and to share that with the world so is your purpose one of those things and that's obviously a very 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 brief skimmed over explanation of what those archetypal energies are but what I'm really feeling is that for some of you it is about reaching out for community, reaching out for connection, reaching out for support to understand you don't have to do this alone understand as well that if you want your business, your sole purpose, I keep saying business because I know for most people doing a sole purpose, they want it to turn into a business. But for your sole purpose, is it something you can devote yourself to fully? Is it something that you can give your soul to? If not, then it probably isn't your soul's purpose. If you can't devote yourself to it, and you don't feel alive in it, maybe it's not your purpose. Maybe there's something else that's coming through. So feeling into that, maybe one of your archetypal energies you're meant to really channel is the priestess, mystical teacher. We'll get more messages on that in a moment, but let's get into the next card here. We have boundaries. So where do you need to establish better boundaries? Again, soul purpose. <laughs> one of the number one things I talk about with, with soul purpose is especially for those who are working for themselves, trying to start your business by yourself, however you're looking at doing it, right? Most people that I work with are trying to establish a business. They're trying to start their own sole purpose business. It could be in any field. It could be in any space. It doesn't have to be in the spiritual space. Like I, I try to reiterate that so many times. Your sole purpose work does not have to be in the spiritual space, right? Some people's is, some people's isn't. So it's not about that. What it is about though, is your sole purpose. Is it's like, I'm just thinking about, I'm just really feeling into this boundaries energy because it's something that I feel so many people need to hear. And I'm just trying to find the best way to, to get there. Okay. Let me backtrack. When we focus on sole purpose as a business, that's how I've got to read this reading because that's just the message I keep getting is this is for anybody who is wanting to turn their sole purpose into a business. It's like if you're not wanting to turn into a business, this reading will not be for you. That's just I'm getting it really clear because I keep hearing the phrase business. So that's how I'm going to have to translate it. What the biggest thing that I see, the biggest block that I see people doing when it comes to turning their sole purpose into a business is they do not have boundaries around their time and energy. And with that, I mean, they will have their phone 
next to their computer. If they're working, if you're working on your computer, they'll have their phone on and it might be not on silent and the phone might ding and you'll get a message and that will take you, let's just say you're working on something, you're, you're creating something, you're crafting something up, you're, you're making something in whatever capacity that is and the phone rings and you answer the phone and then an hour later, you've also been on social media, you've checked your profile, like you've done this, you've done that. Oh shit, what was I doing with my work again? Oh, that's right, now I've got to come back to it. Oh, but now I've just heard this story from a friend and she's told me this and now that's all I'm thinking about and now I can't focus on my work and blah, 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 right? So many people don't have boundaries around their time and energy when it comes to building their soul purpose. When I'm talking about this, we are talking about this from a place of you're building a business you're building a potential thing that is going to generate income you're building something that fills your soul you're building something that you are lit up by right if that is your truth then you need to have some boundaries around your time and energy for example for me and I have worked with so many people on this over the years and I've been in business for myself since I was 18 so I've been doing business for myself for a while now a couple decades but one of the things I say, it's like, why would you have your phone on if you're working? If I'm writing an email, the last thing I need is my phone to ring. My phone is on silent if I'm not actively on it. My phone is on silent actually all day. And if I, if I check my phone, it's because I have the space to check it. But my phone is actually on silent all day because I need to stay connected to the work I'm doing. At the time, like, so my phone has to be on silent so I can write an email, write a post, you know, channel readings, um, record activations. If I was recording an activation and my phone rang or a message lit up on my phone and I'm, I record my activations on my computer and if, if my phone lit up on the side, would I be wanting to go and check it? Yes, because that's how we are wired right? So when I'm recording an activation, when I'm writing an email, when I'm doing anything, my phone is on silent and it is away from me. I can't reach it. I can't reach my hand out and grab my phone. That's, that's how I've set that boundary is that I'm not available if I'm working. If I'm working, I'm only available for clients that I'm actively working with. Otherwise I'm doing the work that I have to do for my business. That's just a really easy example I can give you right? If you are, if you need better boundaries, like where do you need to have better boundaries to build a business when it comes to your sole purpose? Maybe you don't have boundaries around your practices that help enhance your intuition. If you don't have boundaries around your time of how you're working with your intuition, whoa, the light is going really, really dark and dim there. Let me see if I can click this on. That's, that's going to be a terrible light terrible reflection of light there it's not making it any better we're turning it off bit of an interruption but that's okay we've just got a bit of a darker light here and that's okay um boundaries we all need boundaries to build the business if you want to build a business you have to have boundaries boundaries around your time boundaries around your energy how are you letting leaky energy into those boundaries and we all do it I still have boundaries that I leak, that I have leaks around, but I'm pretty strong in some. Like I'm pretty strong in most. I have a couple that I'm still have a little bit of leaky energy around that I'm still working on. They're the bigger boundaries that I've had issues with, but other things are established. They're easy for me. So I understand that it's not e as easy as going, just put your phone away. Some people have an addiction to their phone. So you need to focus on healing the addiction you might have to your phone to be able to disconnect that, that energetic attachment to it so you can create a boundary around it so everybody has their things the phone is just a really simple way to look at that but where do you need better boundaries in your business the amount of times like I'm all for sisterhood and community we need it we absolutely need it we need some form of community to support us in some capacity I've had mentors throughout my entire business career I have had support throughout my entire career there's never been a season of my life where I haven't had some form of support in my business, right? Because I know what it takes to run a business and we all need support in some capacity. But one of the things we can do as well is like we can, our energy can leak in so many different spaces of like we're over giving our energy or we're getting stuck in other people's drama or whatever it is. 
every person who is successful will tell you the same thing. Yes, we can have community. But what if all you're doing all day is spending time engaging in social media, replying to DMs, replying to comments, doing all that kind of thing and engaging in community conversation and not actually in building your business? There's a time for community engagement, for reaching out for support, for replying to comments. There's a time for that. And there's a time to just sit down and do the fucking work. So another prime example, you're watching this on YouTube. I only reply to YouTube comments. I don't reply to all the YouTube comments either. I only reply to the ones that I, that I feel guided to. But I only check my YouTube comments once every day, maybe. But most, most of the time, it's every second day. I'll check the comments maybe every day or two. I check the YouTube comments. I go in, I check the comments, I delete the ones that need to be deleted because I have a strong boundary around negative comments, negative energy. There's a difference between engaging and conversational comments and ones that are just plain old nasty, cruel, trolling, mean. I delete. I have a no tolerance, no tolerance for that. And I have a absolute zero boundary breach in that. They all get deleted. Easy. I go in and delete the ones I need to delete. I respond to the ones I need to respond to and I leave the ones I need to leave. Right, But I don't spend every second of my day looking at comments on YouTube or looking at comments on my social media or looking at stuff like that and engaging in that because that will take up time, valuable time that I have so little of. And if you've seen a reading I did recently, we spoke about time being the only finite like resource we have. We can always restore our energy. We can always regain abundance. We cannot regain time. Time is finite. So if you're going to impact my time, it better be for a good reason. If I allow someone to impact my time, impede on my time, it better be for a good reason. Otherwise, I'm the one with the leaky boundary. So what does that look like for you? Right. So everybody's version of that will be different. But that one there for me is one of the strongest things we go into when it comes to soul purpose. We spent, I remember when we did one of our business programs a number of years ago, um, we spent so much time working on boundaries and I had to do light language activations for it. We did energy clearings for it. We did so much journaling work on it of getting your boundaries in place. You need boundaries in place to run a business. Otherwise your business will absolutely have flaws, leaky energy, or it will fail. You need boundaries around your life and around the business. So I know I was saying this before and I, th I think I got sidetracked, but do you have boundaries around working on your intuition? So for me, my boundary is if I'm meditating, I don't have anybody that will impact my meditation time. If I'm in my meditation, nobody disturbs me because that is so important to the work that I do. So I have a boundary around my meditation time that does not get fucked with. No one comes in and impacts that. And that's something for me that is a non-negotiable, that nobody impacts I could call it my meditation time, but it's my meditation slash channeling slash journaling slash whatever else I do in that time. That is my golden time that I need, not just for my own energy, but also it's when I channel for my business. It's when I channel what I need to do today, what is for the highest good. I channel and I ask, how should I be of service to love today? That's I channel all that stuff and that's part of my morning routine there's nothing that fucks with that. Nothing gets in the way of that. The only thing that gets in the way of that now is when I've been sick. And that's not an external influence. That's my body being like, you just need to rest. And I still try to meditate and I still try to journal. And then I get to the point of going, this is just shit. I can't get, I'm not getting anywhere. So I just stop. So the only thing that takes me out of that is when I'm sick but otherwise now I have a strong boundary around my morning time, around my morning practice that I don't let that deviate in a, in a way that is, that's going to cause a negative ripple effect throughout my day. I set my clear intention. I know what I need to do. I channel, I meditate, I journal, I do what I have to do. And then I go about my day. So having strong non-negotiable boundaries around your time and energy is crucial to me for being in business. That's just something that I truly believe in. Okay, let's have a look at the next one. What is the next card we have? And we have take a break. 
life, uh, a life's work, not a season, get off the treadmill. So what I'm hearing with that is if you have been pushing, 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 trying to make something work, maybe it's not the right thing. Maybe it's not what you're devoted to. Maybe it's not what your soul is actually wanting you to do. Maybe you're trying to push shit uphill because you've invested so much time and energy into it and then we eventually let it go, right? When I let go of Patreon, I was like, I am letting go of how many years of work, how many hundreds and hundreds of hours of content, thousands of hours of recording and I closed it. And it was such a big decision for me to make. And I closed it. We, we, we created a different way of doing ceremonies every month. And that's fine. Like I, we're still doing ceremonies. That was fine. But for me to close Patreon, I looked at it and was like, the number of hours is immeasurable that I put into Patreon. The amount of content we had when we closed it, it was, I think, 300 different practices like activations, meditations, ceremonies, workshops, all that stuff. There was over 300 pieces of content that I literally put, clicked, un, like unpublished my page, closed this down. I had to take a break from it. I took a break in the sense that I took a break previously, knowing that something wasn't feeling quite right. And then I closed it down. And I was told very, very clearly, you have to close this down. Why did I have to close it down? Because I needed to create space for something else to come in, in a more aligned way. Was it an easy decision? No, it wasn't. But I was pushing shit uphill. I was trying to make something fit that no longer fit my energy. It didn't fit my soul's purpose the way it wanted to fit. And I needed to find a different pathway for that. So sometimes we need to take a break to reevaluate, to take stock of where we're at and go, okay, is this actually serving me or is it not anymore? What do I need to do to make this serve me at a higher level? So sometimes we need to take a bit of a break. All right, I'm going to make this super quick because the light's getting really low here. I am actually recording this at a different time of day than I normally would, but I was told to. But the light is terrible. And... We are going to just get some final messages. So the next card we have is Creator Alchemy. So love this energy. This is alchemizing everything you've learned so far. That's how I'm seeing that. Learning to alchemize everything you've learned so far and how to put that into practice. How do you put that into something that you're wanting to build, to create, to manifest, to bring to life? But you need to alchemize all of your lessons. You need to alchemize all of the things you've been learning. You need to alchemize all of the trainings and all of the stuff and all of the, like all of the external noise, alchemize all of that and then put your soul's true path forward into like the thing that you know you're here to do, right? This is why alchemy to me is so important. It's the step before, you know, we look at it, the step before sovereignty is alchemy. When we're in alchemy, we literally have everything like we've harnessed everything, we've, we've, we've embodied it, we have integrated it, and now we have this essence of alchemy. Everything is working in perfect harmony. And when we're in that energy from that place, we can create anything. So that's where we need to be creating from. Um, the next one, the second final card is, what's your honest truth? So... As I said with this, take a break. Like if you could truly ask yourself, is this what I'm meant to be doing? Is this my soul's purpose or am I trying to make something fit because I want to feel like I don't want to let it go because I've invested too much time and energy or like what is the truth in it? What is the truth of that for you? If you could ask yourself honestly, is this what I'm meant to be doing with my life? Yes or no? Does this light me up anymore? Yes or no? Do I need support? Am I having leaky boundaries? Do I even know what a boundary is? Because <laughs> a lot of people don't, right? And we don't, want, we don't want our boundaries to become blocks either, but they can be. So we need to learn how to distinguish boundary between a block and let boundaries be okay and let blocks dissipate. Final card, I'm going to be reading this one from the, the guidebook, but our final card is card 10. And I read this from the guidebook because I absolutely love the dialogue of this deck, the language of this deck, but also the meanings are so unique and I still never remember them all. So we have card number 10 is transmutation. And it says, your body begins to change from within. Every cell in your body perceives the transformation in some, into something different. 
This stage is temporary. In time, you will learn to recognize your new form. But now you are in the midst of your transition and you must facilitate change. Those around you will tell you that you are no longer the same and you also no longer identify with what you were a few minutes ago. Like an actor changing clothes during his show, hidden by swirls of smoke, you put out your new clothes and begin this process. Don't hide it, lest you lose this opportunity to use this evolution in your favor. So you might be going through a transition in yourself, in your business, in your reality in some way that is creating this feeling of we are going through transmutation, we are going through a transition. If something is not working, take a break, let it go right? And let yourself move into what is more aligned for you. All of us are moving into a new season of our life at at any given point in time. But right now in this season we're in right now, like we have been through a massive karmic purge. We're in a massive collective shadow, but we are also transitioning into the highest version of self at this current moment. And so what do you need to let go of in order for you to actually step into the highest version of self, into the new version of you, What would you need to surrender and let go of? What do you need to alchemize to get there, right? So feel into that. Let yourself be led by this. The imagery has got so dark. We're going to let it go here because there's just nothing I can do about changing the light now. So sending you so much love. If you need support in any way, by all means, feel free to reach out. Everything is always listed down in the description box below. But otherwise, I will connect with you all again soon. Much love, beautiful souls.